This is Rev. Dr. Trinity. Thank you for tuning in to celebrate this new moon with us. Since the start of 2017, the sun, moon, and all the constellations in the universe influencing our Earth have brought us to a new global epoch. In numerology, 2017 is the universal one, meaning the number one and one meaning all. Therefore, 2017 is a new beginning. But in the 60s, the hippies announced the dawning of the age of Aquarius, but they mistakenly thought it was a right around the corner. Fifty years later, however, here we are. But who would have imagined that this new beginning would feel more like little kids fighting over the covers and throwing everyone out of the bed in the process? Well, it's pretty bad right now. So, rather than complain, I think it's best to understand what is happening instead of bemoaning what it isn't. Let's start from the, the beginning. The evolution of a cosmic age is about 5,000 years long and means shift in, shifts in worldly power structures, economies, belief systems, and even larger ecological changes. An old order must necessarily shed itself of its old forms and values before the new forms can ascend and prevail. This process is more like the movement of a glacier, with very gradual shifts in this cosmic evolutionary process that may not be noticed for many years or decades. While what I have said is true of the big picture, in this first decade of the Aquarian age, this year in particular, the U.S. has seen a rapid succession of political challenges that have not been seen or felt since the 1940s. Under President Trump, Chaos, confusion, strife, contradiction, and the unexpected are everyday occurrences. What a year ago was seen as a continuation of a gradual, peaceful transition to an evolved, higher order of life under U.S. global leadership since World War II has been challenged by an explicit return back to the old order under President Trump. He is walling off the U.S. from its former European allies, making alliances with other global dictators, shunning 21st century renewable energy and bringing back 19th century energy and industry, coal and steel. Why such a pushback? Simply put, this is a harsh, determined, but desperate attempt to maintain our old hierarchies based on race, gender, sexuality, physical ability, religion, language, and class. While the old order will ultimately never prevail, an old order is never open to a new order that can supersede it. Thus, challenge and its resulting chaos is part of the process of change. In the meantime, how do we move through all the political turmoil around us? By building the foundation of the ground we stand on. We must build our Mother Earth home inside and out. Let's first start by letting go of our stress and getting comfortable. How do you de-stress? Easy. Open your mind and heart to the universe's information and ground yourselves to Mother Earth. First, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Feel your feet and connect your feet to the earth. Now in your mind's eye, take in a deep breath of Mother Earth energy up through your feet and gather your body stress, and with your out breath, send all that stress down and out back to Mother Earth, and send it through your grounding cord at the base of your spine between your legs. Mother Earth will recycle this excess energy just as she recycles dead plants, animals, and bodies. Let's do that again. Breathe up Earth energy, gather your stress, and send it down through your grounding cord between your legs, back down to Mother Earth. Let's do that again, in and out, in and out. Now from the top of your head, breathe in cosmic energy from the universe down into your body, down to the base of your spine where it mixes with Earth energy and with your with the out breath, send the mixture of Earth and cosmic energy back out the top of your head and hands like a mountain. Let's do that again, 
in cosmic energy and with the mixture out the top of your head and also out your hands. Let's do it again. Cosmic energy. There we go. Out the top of your head and also out your hands. Now, breathe in earth energy and cosmic energy at the same time. Easily, effortlessly, and naturally. This is actually how we are simultaneously connected both to the earth below and the cosmos above and experience ourselves as individual beings yet part of something greater than ourselves, something universal. Now, slowly open your eyes. How do you build your Mother Earth home inside and out? With all your chakras, all your energy centers cleared out of blocks and aligned with an open heart and mind, you hear and speak your truth to yourself. Your feelings and actions are guarded by your heart. You live and see and understand how things really are. You are safe, secure, and protected, and you take the necessary steps to respect Mother Earth Love Mother Earth and protect Mother Earth inside and out. How do you start? Let's start by closing your eyes and taking a few breaths. Check your grounding and connection to Earth energy. Check your cosmic energy at the top of your head. Check the alignment of all your energy centers, your chakras, and just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and see them all lined up like a pole from the base of your spine to the top of your head. Now just relax. Give yourself permission to get all the information you need. Open your mind and heart and listen. Spring, the season when life emerges, cannot do so without going through its preceding seasons of fall and winter. Fall is when nature recedes and eventually dies and goes back down into the earth. Winter is when nature, seemingly dead, is really asleep and in a deep, slow process of inner transformation, out of which comes spring, life anew. Similarly, the old social, economic, political, and cultural forms and values undergoing transformation are in the process of receding, dying. This death will create the compost we used to create the new values and forms. One of the critical questions of the day is the future of planet Earth. While there are many protests, projects, policies, and institutions addressing the needs of the Earth, the one most inspirational that connects the social justice needs of the Earth and its people was the struggle of the water protectors to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline that would carry crude oil that has been fracked straight through their sacred land and the burial sites of their ancestors and threaten to pollute the Missouri River, which is the primary source of water for the Standing Rock Indian Reservation. This was a call for support issued on November 24th by 2014, which I would like to share to you by a supporter who, like yourself, saw things from a spiritual point of view. Let us learn from this very important struggle and learn from one of its supporters, Mystic Mama, who shares with us this metaphysical perspective. Quote, Native American elders have been gathering for months to pray and exercise their right to peacefully stand their sacred ground and protest the construction of the Dakota Pipeline. The intimidation tactics being used by the police are incredibly unconstitutional and inhumane. A few days ago, these unarmed, peaceful protests Protectors were sprayed with pepper spray, hit with rubber bullets, and blasted with water cannons in 27-degree weather. Many are now suffering from hyperthermia, and one woman had to have her limb removed because she was hit by one of the stinger grenades that was thrown at them. This Thanksgiving is a potent call to inspired action as we collectively face the ongoing injustice that indigenous communities have suffered and the overall violence and blatant disregard for our elemental resources and our planet Earth. 
we must summon our reverence for life, all of life. When our elders are being maced as they sing and pray and peacefully try to protect land and water for future generations, it is a call for us to use our voices and our communication networks and social media to tell the stories that need to be told. We are being activated to use our skills and organize to create change and brighten the light of our collective shadows. We are being forced to face the violence, the division, the hatred, the bigotry, the prejudice, the sexism, and the greed as it comes out into the light. This contrast is showing us who we are, what truly matters. It is empowering us to care, to do something, to offer kindness and assistance, and to band together with others who care, because we do. This is our task. How are we going to meet it? We are powerful together. We are united beyond our physical appearances, beyond time and space. We are vibrational beings and we have the ability to harmonize and tap into our unified field of being. It is there. It holds us. This is our task and these are the times we chose to be born into. We are here to remember and to help others remember. And we are here to be the bridges and the catalysts for the shift, the seeds of the new awakening. We can choose. We have power, and we must now learn to use it. There are many ways, and even in the smallest ways, with what we can support and who and what we give our money to. We can begin to make changes. It's time we get informed and take action. So please keep sharing. Please keep your hearts open. Please keep your prayers strong and flowing. Please summon kindness and please keep holding the vision that together we are strong and that love conquers all. Love is the answer. Act as bold as love. This is our prayer. In gratitude, in respect, and in service. Signed, Mama Mystic. Unquote. Now, years later, here in 2017, this prayer has been heard. The Standing Rock struggle has just won an important legal victory. Let me read from a press release of June 14, 2017, Washington, D.C. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe won a significant victory today in its fight to protect the tribe's drinking water and ancestral lands from the Dakota Access Pipeline. A federal judge ruled that the federal permits authorizing the pipeline to cross the Missouri River just upstream of the Standing Rock Reservation, which were hastily issued by the Trump administration just days after the inauguration, violated the law in certain critical respects. In a 91-page decision, Judge James Boasberg said, and I quote, the court agrees that the Army Corps of Engineers did not adequately consider the impacts of an oil spill on fishing rights, hunting rights, or environmental justice, or the degree to which the pipeline's effects are likely to be highly controversial, unquote. In short, the Trump administration broke one of our nation's bedrock environmental laws. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, won a major victory in their ongoing battle to protect their drinking water and ancestral lands from the Dakota Access Pipeline. This victory is the result of the tribe's inspiring and courageous fight, supported by hundreds of thousands of people like you who spoke up and made their voices heard. It is in times like this when officials and government institutions that we rely upon for justice and fairness do just that. So we are grateful. Gratitude is a very important healing energy that grows if cultivated into a virtue, a quality of character. So much of what is disturbing about recent political events, in fact, 
is the lack of basic trust, honesty, integrity in our political officials. To counteract this trend, we must build up our own character and virtuous qualities. Otherwise, we devolve into dogs and f cats fighting each other. So let's start. Settle yourself into a relaxed position and take a few deep, calming breaths to relax and center yourself. Now bring to mind a situation where you personally experience an act of honesty, trust, or integrity. You benefited from this action, big or small. Perhaps someone corrected themselves in giving you the right change for a purchase. Or a teacher, boss, or official acknowledged you were right all along. Whatever it is, take that moment into your heart and breathe it in. And notice how it softens and opens your heart. Notice how your thankfulness, gladness for their action felt good to you and brought more kindness to you. This is because gratitude begets kindness and kindness begets gratitude. And so with a bigger and stronger heart, you look up and forward and not back and with woe and fear. Now let go of that image and bring back to your memory the Standing Rock struggle and their recent legal victory and say to with me at the end of every statement, for this I am grateful. Let your awareness bring you to Mother Earth and to this recent victory to ensure a safe source of water. For this I am grateful. Bring your attention to the judge who made this decision. For this, I am grateful. Bring your attention to the water protectors who stood their ground, using prayer and nonviolent means to voice their protest. For this, I am grateful. Bring your attention to the Native American Indian tribes who stood their ground, using prayer and nonviolent means to voice their position. For this, I am grateful. Now bring your attention to all the thousands of people who gathered at Standing Rock and stood their ground, using prayer and nonviolent means to voice their position. For this, I am grateful. Bring your attention to all the hundreds of thousands of people who stood up around the country and around the world, using prayer and nonviolent means to voice their position. For this, I am grateful. Next, turn your attention onto yourself. You are a unique individual, blessed with the opportunity of this learning moment to learn from others how to overcome any obstacles and take the necessary steps to respect Mother Earth, to love Mother Earth, and protect Mother Earth inside and out. For this, I am grateful. Finally, rest into the realization that life is a precious gift, that we have been born into a period of immense access to spiritual teachings so that we can receive the gift of this new emerging epoch of world peace, harmony, and prosperity. For this, I am grateful. Now, gather up all your gratitude and send them out to the universe to be manifested. And take a deep breath of gold energy from the top of your head. Breathe it in to your body. Bend over, let the excess energy come out the top of your head. Let your head dangle and touch the ground if you can. And when you're ready, sit up and open your eyes. Where do you go from here? At Inner Beauty Healing, my sister, Francesca Ordona Hollingsworth, and I help you shed light on your shadows and shine your light brightly. We have two e-courses. I teach 
Facing Your Inner Shadows, an eight-part program to heal yourself from the wounds of trauma, abuse, and violence. And Francesca teaches Revealing Your Timeless Beauty in 90 Days or Less. This is for professional women who want to make a difference in the world and be seen for who they truly are, beautiful, powerful women. To find out more information, go to our website at www.innerbeautyhealing.us. And if you like this talk and want to receive it in an email with our new and full moon podcast so you won't miss one, you can opt in on our site. And to thank any new opt-in newbie, you'll receive a complimentary 15-minute Who Are You? numerology astrology reading. I hope you learned something of value today. Blessings.